In mathematics, the Dirac delta function, or delta function, is a generalized function, or distribution, on the real number line that is zero everywhere except at zero, with an integral of one over the entire real line. The delta function is sometimes thought of as an infinitely high, infinitely thin spike at the origin, with total area one under the spike and physically represents the density of an idealized point mass or point charge. It was introduced by theoretical physicist Paul Dirac. In the context of signal processing it is often referred to as the unit impulse symbol. Its discrete analog is the Kronecker delta function, which is usually defined on a discrete domain and takes values 0 and 1. From a purely mathematical viewpoint, the Dirac delta is not strictly a function because any extended real function that is equal to zero everywhere but a single point must have total integral zero. The delta function only makes sense as a mathematical object when it appears inside an integral, while from this perspective the Dirac delta can usually be manipulated as though it were a function. Formally it must be defined as a distribution that is also a measure. In many applications, the Dirac delta is regarded as a kind of limit of a sequence of functions having a tall spike at the origin. The approximating functions of the sequence are thus approximate, or nascent, delta functions. Overview The graph of the delta function is usually thought of as following the whole x-axis and the positive y-axis. Despite its name of the delta function is not truly a function, at least not a usual one with range in real numbers. For example, the objects f equals delta and g equals zero are equal everywhere except at x equals zero yet have integrals that are different. According to Leber's gay integration theory, if f and g are functions such that f equals g almost everywhere, then f is integrable if and only if g is integrable and the integrals of f and g are identical. Rigorous treatment of the Dirac delta requires measure theory or the theory of distributions. The Dirac delta is used to model a tall narrow spike function and other similar abstractions such as a point charge, point mass or electron point. For example, to calculate the dynamics of a baseball being hit by a bat, one can approximate the force of the bat hitting the baseball by a delta function. In doing so, one not only simplifies the equations, but one also is able to calculate the motion of the baseball by only considering the total impulse of the bat against the ball rather than requiring knowledge of the details of how the bat transferred energy to the ball. In applied mathematics, the delta function is often manipulated as a kind of limit of a sequence of functions, each member of which has a tall spike at the origin. For example, a sequence of Gaussian distributions centered at the origin with variants tending to zero. History Joseph Fourier presented what is now called the Fourier Integral Theorem in his treatise Théorie Analytique de l'Archelle in the form, which is tantamount to the introduction of the delta function in the form. Later, Augustin Cauchy expressed the theorem using exponentials. Cauchy pointed out that in some circumstances the order of integration in this result was significant, as justified using the theory of distributions. The Cauchy equation can be rearranged to resemble Fourier's original formulation and expose the delta function as, where the delta function is expressed as, a rigorous interpretation of the exponential form and the various limitations upon the function f necessary for its application extended over several centuries. The problems with a classical interpretation are explained as follows. The greatest drawback of the classical Fourier transformation is a rather narrow class of functions for which it can be effectively computed. Namely, it is necessary that these functions decrease sufficiently rapidly to zero in order to ensure the existence of the Fourier integral. For example, the Fourier transform of such simple functions as polynomials does not exist in the classical sense. The extension of the classical Fourier transformation to distributions considerably enlarged the class of functions that could be transformed in. This removed many obstacles. 
Further developments included generalization of the Fourier integral, beginning with Plancherol's path-breaking L2 theory, continuing with Wiener's and Bochner's works and culminating with the amalgamation into L. Schwartz's theory of distributions, and leading to the formal development of the Dirac delta function, an infinitesimal formula for an infinitely tall unit impulse delta function explicitly appears in an 1827 text of Augustin Louis Corchy. Sime and Denis Poisson considered the issue in connection with the study of wave propagation as did Gustav Kirchhoff somewhat later. Kirchhoff and Hermann von Helmholtz also introduced the unit impulse as a limit of Gaussians which also corresponded to Lord Kelvin's notion of a point heat source. At the end of the 19th century, Oliver Heaviside used formal Fourier series to manipulate the unit impulse. The Dirac delta function as such was introduced as a convenient notation by Paul Dirac in his influential 1930 book The Principles of Quantum Mechanics. He called it the delta function, since he used it as a continuous analogue of the discrete Kronecker delta. Definitions The Dirac delta can be loosely thought of as a function on the real line which is zero everywhere except at the origin, where it is infinite, and which is also constrained to satisfy the identity this is merely a heuristic characterization. The Dirac delta is not a function in the traditional sense as no function defined on the real numbers has these properties. The Dirac delta function can be rigorously defined either as a distribution or as a measure. As a measure one way to rigorously define the delta function is as a measure, which accepts as an argument a subset A of the real line R, and returns delta equals 1 if 0 A, and delta equals 0 otherwise. If the delta function is conceptualized as modeling an idealized point mass at zero, then delta represents the mass contained in the set A. One may then define the integral against delta as the integral of a function against this mass distribution. Formally, the Lebesgue integral provides the necessary analytic device. The Lebesgue integral with respect to the measure delta satisfies for all continuous compactly supported functions f. The measure delta is not absolutely continuous with respect to the Lebesgue measure, in fact, it is a singular measure. Consequently, the delta measure has no radon nicodym derivative, no true function for which the property holds. As a result, the latter notation is a convenient abusive notation, and not a standard integral. As a probability measure on R, the delta measure is characterized by its cumulative distribution function, which is the unit step function. This means that H is the integral of the cumulative indicator function 1 with m n equals 0 for all n. Thus delta is a distribution of order zero. It is, furthermore, a distribution with compact support. The delta distribution can also be defined in a number of equivalent ways. For instance, it is the distributional derivative of the heavy side step function. This means that, for every test function phi one has intuitively, if integration by parts were permitted, then the latter integral should simplify to an indeed, a form of integration by parts is permitted for the steel chess integral. And in that case one does have in the context of measure theory, the Dirac measure gives rise to a distribution by integration. Conversely, equation defines a Daniel integral on the space of all compactly supported continuous functions phi which, by the Rees representation theorem, can be represented as the Lebesgue integral of phi with respect to some radon measure. Generalizations The delta function can be defined in n-dimensional Euclidean space Rn as the measure such that for every compactly supported, continuous function f. As a measure, the n-dimensional delta function is the product measure of the one-dimensional delta functions in each variable separately. However, despite widespread use in engineering contexts, should be manipulated with care, since the product of distributions can only be defined under quite narrow circumstances. The notion of a Dirac measure makes sense on any set. Thus if x is a set, x0 x is a marked point, and sigma is any sigma algebra of subsets of x. 
Then the measure defined on sets A sigma by is the delta measure or unit mass concentrated at x0. Another common generalization of the delta function is to a differentiable manifold where most of its properties as a distribution can also be exploited because of the differentiable structure. The delta function on a manifold m centered at the point x0 m is defined as the following distribution. For all compactly supported smooth, real-valued functions phi on m, a common special case of this construction is when m is an open set in the Euclidean space Rn, on a locally compact Hausdorff space x. The Dirac delta measure concentrated at a point x is the radon measure associated with the Daniel integral on compactly supported continuous functions phi. At this level of generality, calculus as such is no longer possible, however a variety of techniques from abstract analysis are available. For instance, the mapping is a continuous embedding of x into the space of finite radon measures on x, equipped with its vague topology. Moreover, the convex hull of the image of x under this embedding is dense in the space of probability measures on x. Properties Scaling and symmetry The delta function satisfies the following scaling property for a non-zero scalar alpha, and so in particular, the delta function is an even distribution, in the sense that which is homogeneous of degree minus 1. Algebraic properties The distributional products of delta with x is equal to 0. Conversely, if xf equals xg, where f and g are distributions, then for some constant c, translation the integral of the time-delayed Dirac delta is given by. This is sometimes referred to as the sifting property or the sampling property. The delta function is said to sift out the value at t equals t. It follows that the effect of convolving a function f with the time-delayed Dirac delta is to time-delay f by the same amount. This holds under the precise condition that f be a tempered distribution. As a special case, for instance, we have the identity composition with a function more generally. The delta distribution may be composed with a smooth function g in such a way that the familiar change of variables formula holds. That provided that g is a continuously differentiable function with g nowhere zero. That is, there is a unique way to assign meaning to the distribution so that this identity holds for all compactly supported test functions f. Therefore, the domain must be broken up to exclude the g equals zero point. This distribution satisfies delta equals zero if g is nowhere zero, and otherwise if g has a real root at x zero. Then it is natural therefore to define the composition delta for continuously differentiable functions g by where the sum extends over all roots of g, which are assumed to be simple. Thus, for example in the integral form, the generalized scaling property may be written as properties in n dimensions the delta distribution in an n-dimensional space satisfies the following scaling property instead, so that delta is a homogeneous distribution of degree minus n. Under any reflection or rotation row, the delta function is invariant. As in the one variable case, it is possible to define the composition of delta with a by Lipschitz function g, rn rn uniquely so that the identity for all compactly supported functions f, using the coarea formula from geometric measure theory. One can also define the composition of the delta function with a submersion from one Euclidean space to another one of different dimension. The result is a type of current. In the special case of a continuously differentiable function g, rnr such that the gradient of g is nowhere zero, the following identity holds where the integral on the right is over g minus 1. The dimensional surface defined by g equals zero with respect to the Minkowski content measure. This is known as a simple layer integral. More generally, if S is a smooth hypersurface of Rn, then we can associate to S the distribution that integrates any compactly supported smooth function G over S, where sigma is the hypersurface measure associated to S. This generalization is associated with the potential theory of simple layer potentials on S.
If D is a domain in Rn with smooth boundary S, then delta S is equal to the normal derivative of the indicator function of D in the distribution sense, where N is the outward normal. For a proof, CEG, the article on the surface delta function, Fourier transform. The delta function is a tempered distribution, and therefore it has a well-defined Fourier transform. Formally, one finds properly speaking, the Fourier transform of a distribution is defined by imposing self-adjointness of the Fourier transform under the duality pairing of tempered distributions with Schwartz functions, thus is defined as the unique tempered distribution satisfying for all Schwartz functions phi, and indeed it follows from this that as a result of this identity, the convolution of the delta function with any other tempered distribution S is simply S. That is to say that delta is an identity element for the convolution on tempered distributions. And in fact the space of compactly supported distributions under convolution is an associative algebra with identity the delta function. This property is fundamental in signal processing, as convolution with a tempered distribution is a linear time invariant system, and applying the linear time invariant system measures its impulse response. The impulse response can be computed to any desired degree of accuracy by choosing a suitable approximation for delta, and once it is known, it characterizes the system completely. CLTI system theory, impulse response and convolution. The inverse Fourier transform of the tempered distribution F equals 1 is the delta function. Formally, this is expressed and more rigorously, it follows since for all Schwartz functions f. In these terms, the delta function provides a suggestive statement of the orthogonality property of the Fourier kernel on R. Formally, one has this is, of course, shorthand for the assertion that the Fourier transform of the tempered distribution is which again follows by imposing self-adjointness of the Fourier transform. By analytic continuation of the Fourier transform, the Laplace transform of the delta function is found to be distributional derivatives. The distributional derivative of the Dirac delta distribution is the distribution delta, defined on compactly supported smooth test functions phi by the first equality here is a kind of integration by parts. For if delta were a true function then the kth derivative of delta is defined similarly as the distribution given on test functions by in particular. Delta is an infinitely differentiable distribution. The first derivative of the delta function is the distributional limit of the difference quotients. More properly, one has where tau h is the translation operator, defined on functions by tau h phi equals phi, and on a distribution s by in the theory of electromagnetism. The first derivative of the delta function represents a point magnetic dipole situated at the origin. Accordingly, it is referred to as a dipole or the doublet function. The derivative of the delta function satisfies a number of basic properties, including, furthermore, the convolution of delta with a compactly supported smooth function f is which follows from the properties of the distributional derivative of a convolution. Higher dimensions more generally, on an open set U in the n-dimensional Euclidean space Rn. The Dirac delta distribution centered at her point U is defined by for all phi s, the space of all smooth compactly supported functions on U. If alpha equals is any multi-index and alpha denotes the associated mixed partial derivative operator, then the alpha th derivative alpha delta of delta A is given by that is. The alpha th derivative of delta A is the distribution whose value on any test function phi is the alpha th derivative of phi at A. The first partial derivatives of the delta function are thought of as double layers along the coordinate planes. More generally, the normal derivative of a simple layer supported on a surface is a double layer supported on that surface and represents a laminar magnetic monopole. Higher derivatives of the delta function are known in physics as multipoles. Higher derivatives enter into mathematics naturally as the building blocks for the complete structure of distributions with point support.